McGregor and Sean O'Malley, you know, that's the fight that we've all known we needed, but never talked about it because we never thought we were going to get it. It's on. The fight The fight is on. These guys have been fighting for, well, a, a couple weeks now. And, you know, this whole thing started because, but there's a psychology behind it. So I want to give you a little backstory, and then I, I actually want to get into the psychology of this. This whole thing started because Conor McGregor took a shot at O'Malley for steroid use, performance-enhancing drugs. And O'Malley was one of the victims that got screwed on a, a, on a very high level. Like, here, let, let me just give you an example because no, I know it's one that you will understand. The 12-6 elbow is now legal. Now, it should not be legal. It should have remained illegal. But it's now legal. In addition to that, John Jones, who was disqualified against Matt Hamill, was not only delivering a 12 to 6 elbow, if I understood Steve Mazzagatti correctly, it was also back of the head. And think think of a mohawk. Think of a mohawk. What that mohawk line is, what they'll tell you is the back of the head. So it was a double infraction. It was very tough because that fight was so dominant. And in a very realistic scenario, had John Jones not used that technique, but instead used one of five other, coming from the side, one shot, you're right in the ear, you're picking it. Big John McCarthy will tell you, you want to make sure you're legal, make sure some part of your hand touches his ear. If any part, any finger, any wrist touches the ear, no matter where the rest of the hand goes, it is deemed to be legal. Is why I take the moment to share that with you. But John could have stuck in a rear naked. There was a number of things he could have done very realistically instead of the technique that was ruled to be illegal and won the fight, even finished it in that same moment. Now, that, doesn't, that doesn't change it, but you will understand this. And now where the sport is, that technique is not even illegal. Like we went back to that very moment, but we applied today's rules. The fight would have been stopped just like it was but they would have raised John's hand for TKO as opposed to Hamill's hand for disqualification. And a lot of times in law, a lot of times in rule and policy, that's the best you can do. The best you can do is see something happen, kind of scratch your head and go, ah. Because they've never seen the 12-6 elbow, guys. Don't forget that. When the commission banned it, they'd never seen. It wasn't like this was done in the UFC in 1993. It, was, it wasn't like that. It wasn't like Keith Hackney to Joe Son right in his private parts. So it wasn't like that. They'd heard the dangers and they, they, they saw on the internet, this, this guy broke some bricks like that and so they, they made it illegal. When they actually saw it, they go, oh, you know what? That's that's not any different than these other strikes and we shouldn't have banned it, so we're going to change that rule, but you don't have a retroactive way to clear those guys. I take the time to explain that because it's the exact same thing that O'Malley tested positive for. Osterine. It's the same thing that Ryan Garcia just got hit with. It's what Canelo Alvarez got hit with. It's what a lot of guys got hit with. And in some countries, they were able to prove osterine through contaminated meat. Certain meats they were eating in a certain country, certain kangaroo. Somebody said they were eating horse meat. I've never known if that was an exaggeration, but they found they could get it. And now with osterine, they have found that you can get it if you work out with somebody who's on it, if that person's sweat gets on you, that's a regular training part. You, you do this enough times, that sweat's getting, now all of a sudden you're positive. And matter of fact, one week ago, they found out through a, an all new blind study, you could sleep next to a woman. Bless you, Ryan. You could sleep next to a, a, a woman. I, I believe she has to be a pregnant woman, but, but next to a woman and contract it. So it's the 12 to 6 elbow. Right? I mean, they, they are getting ready to allow Osterine or at least to up the level of Osterine you can have before you're in violation. And that's what they hit O'Malley with. And they not only hit him, they brought him in again and on the second time looked at what had happened and attempted to clear him, which is to say, time served. You really have to understand that. These are the fine points, guys. I've already lost a lot of you, but I want to say this for Sean's benefit. Sean did not cheat. Now, what is cheating? Cheating must involve an intent. And we all know that. We don't, we don't want to go down on something that we did. We want to be judged for our intent. We tend to judge others based on what they did and not look at the intent. But we don't want that done to ourselves. And that's just our society. 
Like John Jones, very similar. We, we don't believe with the domination that John Jones had and superior position that John had had, that he thought I'm going to need to break a rule here. There was no intent. And that is when you talk about where Dana is bothered by that decision and has even suggested that we go back before a commission and attempt to do something retroactive, which is unprecedented. But when Dana talks about that, he's not denying what we saw or what was on video. He's, he's speaking to the intent. He's speaking to the heat of the moment. He's speaking to your fight and things happen. And I'm just sharing with you. I'm, I'm, I'm bringing John's 12 to 6 elbow in because many, so many of you think that's silly. Joe Rogan has influenced so many of you to think it's silly. They're wrong, by the way. It should be illegal. It should still be illegal. That could be a topic for another day. But that's what Sean got hit with. And if you ever go before a commission, make sure you understand. That is the smallest dot on a political map that exists. There is nothing smaller. A precinct member is more powerful than a committee. It is the absolute smallest dot. But they do work at the direction of the attorney general's office and the pleasure of the governor. So they have a massive amount of authority on the little tiny things that they have authority over. And I, I don't say that to put it down. I'm letting you know it's a government agency. So if they found you guilty, you guys have all read those press releases. We have a assay that shows positive and we will have a B sample and he will have his day. He's suspended right there. He is suspended until he has his day, at which time they have never, in the history of that little dot known as the commission, found somebody innocent. And it's not because they didn't believe that they were innocent. If you're following along with me, they will ban you this day. When your test comes in and your B stamp on all this language that they put in, but you are suspended, your license is suspended until that hearing. If you were to miss a massive opportunity, if you were to lose sponsors and face and value within your industry, of which everyone that goes through that does, if you were to do that and they then realize that you're innocent, they are then admitting that they messed up. You can't be innocent unless I, the government, failed. Of which you will get up and take into any court and you will sue them. And they will not have a defense. If they admit you're innocent, that admits they were wrong and they don't have a defense. All you're going to discuss is the dollar amount. So they've never, ever ruled against themselves, but they tried. And when they try... See, it's the language, you got to understand the language. When they tell you time served, took you three months to get before us, we suspend you for three months, time served, you are clear when you walk out. It's the best they can do. They have authority to do more. They never have, and they never will, and I just want you to understand why. Okay, great. Now, I, I, I took in some loops there, but then Connor comes down and he gives Sean a hard time about it. And Sean's looking at Connor saying, you've confessed to cocaine use. You sell and have made millions of dollars on alcohol. I got hit for something that I didn't do. You're going to come at me and you're going to point a finger at me because I had a test that went against me, even though the commission tried to back it up. You never popped for cocaine because they never tested you for cocaine, right? But I mean, this is Sean's entire stance. He didn't say those words. That's how he's looking at it. And he's saying, hey, by the way, I'm a young man. I'm an up and comer. And I've always seen you. I've always admired you. So when Connor takes a shot at him, it stings a little extra. O'Malley versus McGregor. McGregor started it, but now he's two beats behind. Sean got him in the nose. Sean just followed up with a cross. As I see it, Connor's move. 